Nice to meet you. This is like so Americana out here in the country, a big old front porch. You just want to hang out. Well, we, we do. <laughs> you do hang out? Oh, yeah. Well, getting uh, to the Speedway, um, we know it came in 1954. So whose idea was Par Paragon Speedway? Who, who were the original owners? Where did it come from? It was uh, Ed Shepard who owned this farm. Mm -hmm. Ed and Bill. Ed and Bill. Bill was a big part of it. And then uh, Jones owned the elevator and the fields and all this next door. So my understanding, they got together and decided to start a racetrack. And uh, they built the track, which was uh, halfway on Shepherd's property and halfway on Jones. They uh, ended up in court over it. And, uh, really? Since Shepherd owned most of the land, why the judge uh, awarded it. Shepherd, and of course he had to buy out the Jones part. Uh huh. That's why there's a zigzag in the offset in the property over in the corner. But anyway, yeah. But Jones built a fence down the middle. They need to stop. Yeah, the they, base. Come here, <laughs> they come in here. They come in here. One the guys did, and they yeah. built a fence down the down the middle of the track. Down, you know, so they couldn't use the track. I wonder if those two ever mended fences. No yeah. pun intended. Intended. Probably not. Probably. So did the Shepherds then own it for a period of years on his own? Eight, yes. His family, 22 yeah. years. 22 years? Yeah. So, wow, did you guys buy it from the Shepherds? No, 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 we're the fourth owner. You're the fourth owner, okay. There was another gentleman that uh, flew in here from Arizona. Red Key. Red Key, Harry Red Key. And then uh, he sold it to the Johnson family, Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson Memorial. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mike and Sue Johnson bought it, and they had it either five or six years. I'm not really sure if they knew about it. Yeah. What year did you get it? Eighty-six. Okay. So, why did you guys? Where did the decision come from to buy this place? One wanted to do it, one didn't. How did this come to be for you well, two? I grew up down here. My dad was a race fan, so. When it started in 54, we sat coming out of turn four, my family did, when Shepard had it. And then in high school, we started dating, and in order to date me, he had to go with the family <laughs> to, to the racetrack. So that's how he got into racing. So you brought him in? Yes. Well, that's interesting. So were you all in when he said one day, let's no. buy the place? No. Okay. <laughs> that's where the story... No takes no. a turn. In fact, I was uh, with some friends uh, in Pennsylvania, and I got a phone call saying, hey, I think I got the racetrack bought. And uh, So, so how did he get you to come around? Well, we had a discussion, and uh, we, he had been racing for 20 years, and we were Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We took the uh, race car out all over the place and took our two, two little daughters with us. And uh, I was kind of over all of the traveling and all the racing. So I thought maybe this would be easier. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that, 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 you know, every, every driver knows how to operate a racetrack. It's yeah. just oh, of course. Yeah. I didn't have any trouble running this place because every Saturday night I had 2,000 people or so tell me how to do it. <laughs> so that was yeah, we thought we could do it and we went into it blind and we learned by doing and what you do, what you can't do, what you shouldn't do, what works, what doesn't work. But you raised your girls here, didn't you, literally? I mean... At all the racetracks, yeah. Yeah, but, but... So this is a family story. It's not yeah. just a racetrack. When you're pitted over there, it's a, a lot different than uh, running the business. It's a business. It's always been a of course. to me. But you got to have love to make it work. Love is you, a place. You have to... And, and because of my connection and my dad, you know, I, I never... I'm never out here that I don't think about my dad and... In 86, my dad passed away with cancer. Uh, the year you guys bought it? Two weeks prior, two months prior. Yeah, two months prior. And I bet one of the last things I could tell my dad was that I thought we got it bought because uh, he loved this place. He's been here all this time because when you're walking around here, you know, and uh, or you're mowing or whatever you do, you do by yourself. I always said that was the best time. All 
the days when you're here by yourself or when you really connect when there's with not the 2,000 people here you connect with the property that's really yeah. interesting it's this just, is when I love it I, and, I bet um, we had the breeze um, coming yeah. in the valley though. and people don't understand people have tried to buy it they don't understand why we're reluctant and it's because of the of the history and when we first started we didn't we didn't have any money we had a lot of friends and uh, they came and they painted and they weed eated and they did everything they could they worked for free because we were still working full-time jobs for the first 12 or 13 years at uh, my mother worked the novelty stand and when grandchildren came along we started them on the pop machine and we uh, raised the yeah. We raised grand, four grandkids, four grandkids down, here. down here. They well, all work. So that makes this place, racetracks are already special, but you have a family story uh, yeah. deeply ingrained here. You know, your kids, your grandkids raised here. I mean, this is your home. Uh, it's a great story. That's why it's so hard to let go. That's, that's I, I can believe it. I mean, I mean, when you do sell this property, is it going to be hard to drive out of here for the last time? I mean, is that a difficult moment? One of the hardest things I think I'll ever do in my life. Yeah. We uh, we just love the place, but we love we love the people. We, and they I worked both ticket booths, so I'd start in the pit, and uh, all these guys would come in and you know, did you know my uncle died? My dad's getting better, and we had that personal communication and and they would bring my mother flowers and they'd and bring pie, us pie, pie from grace saturday night i had three people come tell me uh, and tell me that they'd lost either a wife or a mother you guys are like the waltons here <laughs> 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 night john boy it's hard to go up there and to sit and watch a race whenever um you know, every inch of this place we've touched, we've painted, we we put in all the fencing. We, he and I did all of that. You know, I didn't and, know. Uh, <laughs> we yeah. had people work part time for us when they got off work. They come down and help us do things, you know. And, but as far as the lighting and yeah. PA system, we have to put all that up. And, and I don't know how I did it. I, I don't remember how. <laughs> well, we were a lot younger. Yeah. But but if that's the thing, people, other promoters don't understand us, and we made decisions uh, for the track that they could not understand. But it was because these people have always been like family to sure. us. There, it's not it's not just a business. It's when they come, you're you're so happy to see them. And in the spring, after being gone for the winter, I mean, you know, we love these people. I mean, I love the property. I, I love sitting up there in that grandstand area and just looking out over the rolling hills of central southern Indiana. Mm -hmm. It's it's beautiful. Yeah. This has that. a real, real Americana feel to that. it. Is this how you guys earned your living? I mean, this was it. This was your life. It was, did you have well, work outside this place? Yeah. First 11 years. I worked, really? Yeah, I worked for General Motors 33 years. And First 11 years, I did both. You did both. Until I could retire. Wow. And then I worked for the county in Martinsville. And While you had the track? Yes. I worked the first 12 oh. years before I could retire. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Come down here in the evening, we got off work yeah. and do our thing. And Man. Well, dark so, after dark. So, see, when we started, like, like I said, we knew nothing um, about anything. Uh, you know, you have to order food, well, where and how much. And uh, so we, you have to advertise. Back then, everything, they have it easy now. Yeah, right, the, right to social media and Facebook. But you had to be in the star, and that was, what, three or four hundred a week for a tiny ad. And uh, we probably had $2,000 in advertising every week. You're ringed out, you still have to pay it. You didn't bring any money, you lost money. That uh, what a lot of people didn't know. We we always were proud of the fact we paid every purse we advertised. We paid our help. We never, never we cut never a cut a purse, and everybody always got paid. And sometimes in the early years, on Friday we would cash our checks, our our paychecks. 
bring it with us because we to help the balance we didn't know if we were going to need it wow and often we used it that's amazing to pay people did it get progressively harder to make money in the short track business over the years as the world no, changed it got around easier. It got, easier. It got easier i don't know if i've heard that one yet you need to, you know, you need to know when to hold them and when to fold them <laughs> the forecast just the forecast alone and kill your crowd of course just the not e it doesn't even have to rain just the threat of rain will take it away um did you communicate with other racetrack promoters in the area do, do racetrack promoters you know communicate regularly are you friends are you foes are you competition uh did you have any particular someone that helped you out in the early days no i'd say lefty. That, lefty. yeah harry left you back in the day who's he he promoted kokomo kokomo okay yeah. So one to listen to. He took a liking to us, so he tried to help us and guide us. Advice, general advice. General advice, very Number helpful. One, never do business with your competition. Never do business with your competition. Really? <laughs> Did that prove to be true? Yes. <laughs> What's been your favorite thing about this industry? The people. The people, the people yeah. I know in, in the early years, we kept uh, a bunch of sweatshirts in the office and people would come and not bring their children. You know, it gets cool in this valley, typically. Mm -hmm. and, and they would come and not bring the kids something or, or it would rain and they'd get wet or whatever. And we would just pull out the sweatshirts and hand them out. They'd bring them back, wash the next week. Really? And we'd put them back, you know, in the office for the next time. But that's, those are the things. That's, that doesn't have, I don't know that that happens anymore. I haven't heard that one. Part of the love. That's, yeah. That's, love. that's part of the that's love a cool story. for the people and the, and the love for the, you know, for, for the area. And that what works in one area with one track will not work. You try to copy, but it won't work. It's not a cookie cutter business. No. no. We had to know our area, our people, what they could afford. Call that a niche. You got yeah. Own niche. Yeah. And I did. We did when I started that program where everybody runs a feature. Then I stand on the trailer and watch somebody else. And and I know when I first come up with that idea, Carl Kenzer, he's always a good friend of mine, and run together, race together, and we served on the board of directors of Bloomington Speedway together for years, and uh, came up with that idea. And I next day I called Carl and uh, run that idea by and it got real quiet and i said carl you still there after three or four minutes you know he said i'm thinking <laughs> and a few minutes later why i said what do you think he said that's the best idea i ever heard i wanted him to see if he would endorse the idea carl kinzer endorsing something you know it usually goes pretty good because he's like well respected yeah i mean if if carl kinzer told the sprint car teams that they'll go faster if they put horse manure on their hood, yeah. everyone will do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, he said that's the best idea I've heard for a local, you know, weekly deal. I, I'm, I have a real good sense of your, your love for this place. Um, Judy, what's been the, your least favorite thing about this industry? When you're, you spend all the hours out here and you do everything you do and then um, you have all these wonderful people come in and you have one person that is unhappy about something something minute yeah and it it just it just brings it uh, because that's what you dwell on that we were new in the business and we had our first uh, USAC race we had no idea the number of people that would come because we hadn't experienced it Sure. And so, uh, like in concession, I had full crew, but they weren't going fast enough for some of the people in the lines. And I, I remember that. This is 30 years You had ago. no idea how many people I were coming no around the way. Because we hadn't had anything that big and sure. had not experienced the crowd. But still, I had a full concession crew. And they, they were good, they were fast. working as hard as they could and sweating their you yes. know what off. It's and that is uh, the concession workers. Yeah. That is such a difficult environment because yeah. it's it's ninety outside and it's hundred and ten in there. True. And you have angry people in line. But, uh, they were going as hard as they could go, and and we were all running, 
and uh, a lady came up and she was not very nice to say the least. I don't like and her. I thought, you know, we all just kind of stood there and looked at each other and thought, what more, what more can you give? What more can you do? And uh, things, things like that, really, I remember. I shouldn't be, because there's so much good and so many nice people. Of course. But that was my first experience at someone really not understanding anything about anything. What you're going through. Yeah. They're not in your shoes. Well, fellow human being, after standing in line watching everybody, you know. Well, it's like when Jeff Gordon was a rookie in NASCAR. Oh, yeah. He'd raced down here since he was 14 years old. South. But anyway, we had him for autograph night. We flew him in. We flew him in. We had to... Is this after he had gone on to his NASCAR career? Yeah. His rookie his, year. His oh. Rookie year. oh, okay. And we had him, and uh, I had to go through his, uh, even though I know him, I still had to go through his promoter to mm -hmm. set everything up. We had to pick him up at the airport in Indianapolis, and I met him up there in the breezeway and signed autographs, and he brought a bunch of pictures and stuff to sign and give to mm -hmm. people. Well, it rained, so here's a, a crowd that he, he drawed, uh, wanting their money back. Uh, well, that's one thing you don't do, you don't give money back at a rate. Yeah, you give them a rain check. You give them a rain check, but sure. that wasn't good enough because I charged an extra $3 above the ticket price to cover Jeff's expenses. Yes, and oh, what did you do? Oh my gosh. I had to call the police eventually. Oh no. They were a, going to riot. A riot. Oh yeah. my gosh. And it was ridiculous. But uh, how did you calm the situation eventually? Well, we just stand our ground. At, at, they came to the back window of the office with it, and we had the police there. So the way it ended up, those are all of our locals took a rain check. And those who were simply irate, you couldn't calm down and you couldn't shut up. Some lady come to me we and gave wanted, money her, back. wanted her money back. And I don't know, um, admission yeah. might have been seven at the time. And we charged ten, three extra. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to pull them out back. And I noticed that she was standing there with a Jeff Gordon's autograph picture in her hand. And I said, lady, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you give me that picture, Jeff Gordon signed for you. And I'll give you your money back. Wow, that's a great she comeback. She said, well, I don't think so. And I said, fair deal. You still use a rain check to cover, say, the $7, but you give me your pic picture. Yeah, she can still come back and see a yeah, race. Right. Yeah. She still that's, that's, that's completely acceptable. I like that answer. I like that solution. The race fan I love, the guy or the gal, is the one that stands in the concession line and it may it's a, exceptionally busy tonight maybe you're down on staff whatever it is and it took too long to get there uh maybe they missed a heat race yeah. or two which they came to see and they finally get there and they're as nice and as pleasant as yeah. can be because they understand right. what you're you know trying to accomplish and what you're going through back there that's the race fan i like you know yeah. and there's a lot more of those than yeah, there are like I said, 90, 90, probably, probably 99% are like that. My mother's dad, my grandfather on her side, he raced tobacco for 65 mm -hmm. years. And uh, mm -hmm. he never held a cigarette or a cigar or nothing in his hands and raised tobacco. So he raised tobacco. But now my other grandpa, Ford, he smoked everything. Cigarettes, <laughs> cigar, pipe, but he lived to be 97, so. Well. I remember this guy on Johnny Carson's show one night. He was like 107. And and Johnny said, he come hobbling out there, and he said, Johnny? Or Johnny said, oh, I bet you're 107. I mean, you must take phenomenal care of yourself. I wouldn't think you smoke or anything like that. And the guy looks at him, he goes, been smoking since I was five. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all DNA there. <laughs> that was so funny. The farmhouse. 1903. Who who built the farmhouse we're, we're at? It was owned by a guy, family named Birch. Birch. And he set up a sawmill, I guess, and uh, cut the timber off his property here. His house has got every piece of tar or wood in it you can imagine. All different kinds. Now, did the shepherds live here as well? Yes, what, they before did. they did. They did. Okay. After they bought it. And now, did the next ownership group move in too? Oh uh, yes. Yes. Yes, but that. Uh, Lipke did. Not Lipke. Uh, Red, Red Key. Red Key did. So you guys moved in in 1986 when you took on the property? No. no. We, we waited two years or so. Okay. Can, Can I look inside? Sure. sure. I yeah, I want to see this place. Oh, I 
I love it already. These hardwood floors, they're original. Yeah. There was a wall, you can see in the floor, there was a wall that went through here. Oh, really? You took out the, you opened yes. this right up? Yes. That was a great idea. Over here on the side was a bedroom, master bedroom, oh, I guess. Really? And this little area here was the living room. Living room. And uh, of course it just had the one single <laughs> doorway and we opened all that up. There's something about a family dining room table and the uh, memories and discussions you guys shared around that table over the holidays. And uh, that's the house you were born in? Yeah, born at home. My dad delivered Wow. Me. What year were you born then? 43. Your dad delivered you? Yes, and my sister wow. too. And that's in Brown County? Yes. And you were born in that house? Yes. <laughs> the Christmas tree's still up. Well, Is that you or him? That's around. him. <laughs> well, good for you. I love Christmas. I told you about my grandfather that raised tobacco. That was his tobacco bar, and it's still standing today. Really? Yeah. I absolutely love it. I love your home. The kitchen. It's like walking into a home version of the Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> look, at her, look at her cook stove in here. The what? Her cook stove on the left. Oh, my God. Do you use that? Yes. The only stove we got. Oh, that's so cool. But the Detroit you, Jewel, the, if you they bake make, better. Bake a turkey for Thanksgiving, you better start the day before. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's something you'll see in the Henry Ford Museum, is what yeah. you'll see. Well, the, De Ford. the Detroit yeah. Jewel. Yeah, this is the Ford yeah, Museum. Ford. Um, look at that kitchen table. That's 40s. Oh, yeah. 40s. I can, uh, yeah, yeah. The metal. Mm -hmm. Very cool. This was built in 01. This add-on. This, oh, side. right, right. This used to be a side porch. Uh -huh. Boy, so you used the heck out of this space, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Oh, I love that ceiling. That's beautiful. Yeah, oh, that's neat. 32 years. Yeah. Keith and Judy Ford. Mm -hmm. So they nice. They presented that to us our last night. They let, uh, had the driver sign it and let people come down out of the crowd. That's to really? That's the a, best trophy you've ever got. Yeah, I'll buy that. And that's what I'm saying about our connection with. Yeah. Um, and when it was on, when the, it was on the front stretch, yeah. when yeah. it was on the front stretch over there and he took the hood off and presented it to, well, before he took mm -hmm. it off, they let the fans come down on the track. Yeah. Well, the fans signed it. That's so cool. We found this in the barn. In the barn? Uh -huh, like, up here. Oh. In the barn. The barn that goes with the original property? Yes. 90 cents admission to get in Paragon Speedway uh -huh. in 1954. And the kids, 6 to 12, one American quarter. <laughs> that is so... It costs more now, doesn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at this. I Bob Kinzer, he was a wheel man. Larry Miller, that's a name I didn't recognize till Carl Kinzer brought that to my attention. Larry Miller, oh, he, he was he was the the Steve Kinzer before you know before Steve he got there. And he, he, he drove for Carl Kinzer. Mm -hmm, yes. Look at this, Dick Gaines. Look at that track record, Larry Miller, sixteen six six four. Ooh, look at that little balcony. I could give a speech up there. <laughs> <laughs> It's not up there now, I'm, I hire myself off. You guys need like the oh, get, you, okay. the Paragon Speedway version of the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> it's, it's I'm your guy. It's not up there now. Put out the quilt. Oh, that's so cool. Those are backs of t-shirts? Yeah. Yes. What a excellent, awesome idea. Our first, uh, our your first daughter did that? Yes. There's an old car. Carl, a big Bertha. Who is that driver? Me. That's you. Mm -hmm. So you drove too? Yeah. Okay. Is that you there? Yeah, I built a new car in 71 or two. Wow. Tearing down the ticket booth, yep. Yeah. Ticket booth and stacking up the boards to burn them and my grandson enjoyed knocking the boards off the wall. Yeah, and, and uh, so he said, Papa, he said, I don't think you want to burn this board. So I walked inside and he pointed to A.J. Ford's signature. He signed it in. Yeah, I think it was dated 1960. So, so A.J. Foyt was here. Yeah. Hey, we keep everything. <laughs> Is that the board yes. he's talking about? So it's hard to see. That's okay. But